Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we are talking about another mood change that happens kind of in those transitional phases in a woman's life with changes with hormones. A couple weeks ago, right, we talked about anxiety and how hormones play a big role in anxiety and how I see that clinically in my practice all the time. Um, and then last week we talked about perimenopause, um, specifically because I think it's like the worst time for treatment and I think we could do so much better as a community in treating women in perimenopause. Well, today that's an this video is another one of those kind of videos. I think this is um, a topic that we do a disservice on in women, again, um, because we don't talk about it enough, and that is um, mood disorder, specifically depression, um, as it relates to changes in estrogen. Um, well, when do we have changes in estrogen? In times like perimenopause and menopause, right? Um, so first of all, I am Dr. Alexandra Mayer. If you have been watching my channel all along, thank you so much. We really appreciate that. Our goal is really just to help more women feel the best that they can possibly feel through education. Um, we think that more women deserve really good education to um, understand their hormones better so that they can be the best version of themselves. So if you feel like our videos have been helping you, go ahead and share them with a friend. Hit the like button and leave us a comment below because we really appreciate that. And then with further ado, let's jump in. So we're talking about depression today, right? Um, oftentimes, um, depression can show up a little bit out of the blue and it shows up um sometimes people think of like severe depression symptoms right but depression has a major i would say spectrum of symptoms right so it can be all the way from sleeps all the time to can't sleep right um it can be very weepy and sad um and thoughts of suicide which rates in suicide actually do go up a lot in women in that perimenopausal phase. Um, so it's something we need to be talking about, but it can also be things like irritability. Um, so somebody mentioned at a conference this weekend that irritability is just depression with an attitude. And I thought that that was just the funniest and most accurate statement, right? Um, so sometimes our mood changes um, don't have to be severe to be a problem. And I think that's why I want to do this video um, because I have a lot of patients where they go through this perimenopausal transition um, and they have mood disorders. Nobody's ever talked to them about this, right? We talk about the insomnia. We talk about the night sweats. People maybe talk about libido and vaginal dryness, but nobody talks about the fact that up to 20% or more of women will have mood disorders come the perimenopause timeframe, right? Um, that's a big number. And um, I think we do a disservice to women because like I said rates of suicide actually do increase dramatically in this time frame um, and that's because out of nowhere you can be like oh my god my mood is terrible and it's I think sometimes when we think about the mood we think of like that snappiness and that irritability right that they used to show on tv shows for women going through menopause but it can be way more than that um, I have a patient who came in my office last week and she has been suffering, literally suffering. And she suffered for a few months. And then finally she said, I can't do this anymore. Um, she's very, very suicidal. And uh, she finally realized, you know what? My hormones are shifting. Let me go get them checked. And sure enough, estrogen played a big role. So that's really the number one hormone that we think about when we want to think about um, how to treat depression symptoms, right? So one of my biggest pet peeves, um, short of perimenopause, which we talked about last week, right? One of my biggest pet peeves is that women come in with these symptoms in perimenopause like depression and they're just thrown an antidepressant as if that's helping the problem. It's not, right? If the problem is low estrogen, an antidepressant isn't fixing that. Now there is some really interesting research postmenopausally, which we will talk about, where potentially maybe combo treatment might be what we're looking for, but we will talk more about that. So when do we see rates of depression increase in a woman's life? So we see rates of depression increase in the post-pregnancy, um, that postpartum phase, right? Um, and even postpartum depression is thought to be a dramatic shift in estrogen that's causing those symptoms. So we see it there. Um, we see it in patients on birth control. And I've talked about this in previous videos, but a lot of patients um, think that on birth control, their, their hormones are higher, right? Because they're taking estrogen, um, but really they're taking such a low amount of these hormones that they're actually decreasing their own hormone production. So oftentimes we see lower estrogen in women on birth control. So again, low estrogen, right? Low estrogen postpartum, low estrogen um, in women on birth control pills. And then we see this in the perimenopausal phase. 
And specifically, we see the most mood disorders when women are transitioning into menopause. So in that perimenopausal phase, which we talked about in our last video, can start as early as 40 and might be a little bit even earlier than that, right? Um, all the way through that transitional phase into menopause when we're really seeing changes in the cycle and we're really seeing those dramatic hormonal shifts with, with hormones being just much, much lower. What's interesting is that if we just let women suffer until into menopause, at some point, the research shows that um, the rates of depression will actually decline to that of a man, usually. Um, and that although estrogen has been shown in research to be incredibly helpful in the perimenopausal phase for helping with depression symptoms, according to research, it's a little bit less helpful in the postmenopausal phase, which is really interesting. And so some of the research is indicating that maybe the combo treatment, right, of an antidepressant and estrogen, if necessary, might be more necessary in the postmenopausal phase than perimenopause. Um, so why, right? What is estrogen doing? Why? Um, well, estrogen actually impacts a couple things. So it impacts our serotonin um, creation, so the amount of serotonin that we make. Um, it impacts serotonin receptors in the brain, so it increases serotonin receptors, so we're making more serotonin and we're able to utilize our serotonin more effectively. And then actually some research even indicates that estrogen might help with serotonin reuptake meaning the way that how serotonin sits in the synapse um, and basically how active it is, right? That's how antidepressants work. SSRIs are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So they affect the reuptake of serotonin and estrogen might also help with that. Um, the other thing that it helps is it helps with modulate your production of endorphins, which are basically your feel good hormones, right? So First of all, it's modulating all the ways that our happy hormone works, and it also is helping with those feel-good endorphins that we should get when we do things that make us feel good. And that's one of the things that happens in depression, right? Is that not only are we less likely to do things that we normally like to do, when we do things, we get less joy out of them. And so it's a vicious cycle, and estrogen has been shown to help with those things. Um, so postmenopausally, they're showing that um, estrogen replacement is not as helpful for depression symptoms. I would definitely put that in quotation marks like I just did um, because sometimes we question where that kind of stuff comes from. Um, but research is showing that combination therapy might be necessary. And I will say that even in my perimenopausal women, I very rarely let them wander out of my office with just hormones to fix their depression. And actually, I was out at a vet the other day and a woman was telling me about her symptoms because this does happen a lot when you are in, uh, when you're a doctor, it does happen a lot. Um, she was telling me about her symptoms and she was saying how, unlike my patient, who wasn't given hormones as a really great option or adequate dosing of hormones as a really good option. She was given only hormones and it wasn't enough. Um, and she mentioned how she needed an SSRI um, or an antidepressant to help her with her symptoms. Great. So honestly, in the majority of symptoms in my office, I do combination therapy, right? Um, we might do uh, amino acid therapy or we might do herbal medicine because that can be really, really helpful. And then in really severe cases, we will mix medications, um, but not leave out the hormonal piece. Um, because at the end of the day, right, if you have hormonally based depression and um, we aren't treating you with hormones, what are we doing? And that's really my question in all of the videos that we've been doing lately is like the, what are we doing to women in the perimenopausal and menopausal ranges, right? Um, so, I want to know if you have ever experienced this mood change because I think it's really, really common in women and it's something that we don't talk about. And so women definitely feel um, very caught off guard, very alone um, and like they don't know what to do. And so put in the comments below if you've ever experienced this um, and we will see you soon for our next video.